presentation. Uh, right, so what we will do today is we will lo look at how to add and access our OneDrive. We will do sharing of our files and how to make how to make it public to everyone, how to present it or uh, share it with only certain individuals, and then privacy settings with always the the the, um, the Poppy Act with with our learners. Calibra collaboration, collaboration of files and then finally we'll do final file organization and then we'll do some shortcuts on the keyboard that um, will just make you your time more effective uh, in front of the keyboard or in front of your computer so with no further ado i would like to just toggle to my onedrive okay so we are going today, first of all, we're going to need to upload or download uh, and upload from a OneDrive. You are going to need to sign into your OneDrive and that's with uh, your specific login details. Now, I know login details can be a, a hassle because many times if you've got, you forget your password and you don't know what you did with it, but I do encourage you to save it in a safe place. Um, and make sure that you can uh, download and upload files correctly. So we're gonna do this um, very step by step. If you can see my screen here, yeah, I've, I've somewhat created a like a, uh, a meme for us. Um, and we are going to practically upload this into our OneDrive for easy access. So obviously we are going to just quickly save this. So there you'll see at the top of my screen, it says OneDrive personal, but we are not going to save it to my personal drive. We want to save it to the to my to my work um, uh, OneDrive, my Kenridge OneDrive. But for the purpose of uploading and downloading, I'm just going to select uh, in, in, in my um, option panel here, I'm just going to select a folder that I've created and I'm going to say, ICT, I'm going to name my file, ICT meme, and I'm going to just hit save. From there, it is now saved to your, in my case, to my personal OneDrive, but otherwise you will save it to where you feel comfortable to, to uh, save it to your computer. But now, as we know, the new thing is save to the cloud, and that is much more accessible when you have multiple devices that you work with. When we now go to our Kenridge link, I can go and click on upload. So when you are in a specific, I can actually go and show you my OneDrive. If you can just give me one moment. And colleagues, for those of you, sorry, Liesl, just a second. Mm. For those Fine. of you who um, have access to your WCG Schools account, your WCG Schools account is not just there for your payslips and to get your payslips and corporate communication and registry information. If you log in like you would to your Outlook or to your WCG Schools account, you will have access to the full bouquet that Microsoft has to offer to you online. So Liesl is now talking about her online OneDrive. And if you sign into your WCG Schools, you will have access to this OneDrive if your school is not already established as a Microsoft school. So we just need to keep that in mind as well, colleagues. So Melissa, just for clarity, where would they get the login details if they don't have it yet? So if they don't have their login details, the uh, colleague at their school who's responsible for CMIS would have to go and download their information from CMIS. So Ariel, correct me if I'm wrong, they have to go to broadband and then they would get their credentials. And if their name is not on that list, they would then have to contact the help desk so that the help desk will send them a form to complete and then they will receive their credentials. So all their credentials is on CMIS, but if they've been receiving their pay slips regularly, they know how to access their WCG schools account then. There is a lot of things on my screen. And first and foremost, I want to ask and urge, stop and look. Many times it, the the app or the program that we're working w w in it are very user-friendly. And that's one thing with Microsoft, 
they strive to make things extremely user friendly. What we use, what we see in front of us is my, this is now my personal OneDrive. We'll toggle back to my other, my, my work OneDrive, but you'll see my name is on the left. There's the menu on the left where you see all the other Microsoft uh, um, apps and you can, you can jump through that to those apps directly. There's just the OneDrive home. And then down the left, you see all my, my options, my files, recent, the photos shared and so on. We're going to look at that, that a little bit later. But what I want to focus on right now is the upload button. Now, first of all, and this is touching on organizing your files, we can go and click on uh, a new. If we click on new and please, again, feel free to to uh, work on a separate screen or a separate device and work with me as we go. Uh, we want to create a let's, let's say we want to create a folder uh, for easy access or when you when you have lots of documents like lesson plans or photos uh, or assessments you want to upload you don't want your your home screen to be overcrowded with documents you want to rather have a proper filing system and I always say if you are if you don't can't make it to work that day and someone else has to have access to to your OneDrive and you've shared your OneDrive with someone they have to be able to get to your files without needing to contact you you are in bed you don't want you don't want to breathe even now you want to, you need to answer answer uh, uh, emails because somebody can't access the files keep it simple i know that when we file it's almost like a fingerprint it's it's my filing system so if it's my brain what makes logical sense to me but keeping in mind that the more simpler you keep it the easier accessible it can be with people you share it right so now we're going to create a folder and there you have a pop-up window and it says create file and we are going to say ICT training. We are going to click create. And there you will see it there. Let me just, can I just quickly do this? Apologies. Right, there you'll see it. ICT training and it will have a little bit of a three little dots there that's it that means it's a new folder and it's just been created i can click on there double click or click doesn't matter whatever your settings is then you have again these options at the top again look at your screen especially if it's a new program just take a moment and look at what you see what i always say is click a button and see what happens if there's a delete option or a move option, nine out of the 10 times Microsoft or even Google for that matter will give you a are you sure option. Stop and read until you are familiar with the program and then you can can uh, go ahead and just click anywhere. But for now, it, until this is a familiar site, just take that extra half a second and read what is on your screen. So we have options in the, on the top. We're going to say upload. We're going to upload a file. You can upload a folder, uh, but for this exercise, we're going to just upload a folder, a, a file. And there is my meme that I just created. So now you have, you can see, I have access to all my uh, um, documents, all my photos, everything that is in my hard drive or even shared on my personal uh, uh, OneDrive, there's my Kenrich OneDrive, and I can go and select what I upload. Right, so let's pretend, let's see, let's see what happens. So I'm click highlighting the file I want to upload, and then I say open. Oops, now see, pop up. Don't panic, don't stress. It says uh, ICT meme, this file's in use, enter a new name or close the program. Okay, so now I realize, oops. I've left the, the, the document open. All I need to do is go and close it. And I try again. And there it should. It says uploading one item. And ta-da! There is my first document in my OneDrive. Now, if you want to upload multiple files, you can also do that. We can, and you can, the shortcut for that is if you want to control, you want to do just from top to bottom, you can press control 
So if I can toggle back, quickly toggle to my hover cam, there is control. Uh, this keyboard obviously doesn't work, but just to, to for a purpose of this exercise, just to show you where it control is. So if you click control, it highlights from top to bottom. Whatever you've highlighted first, it will go from from the bottom there. But if you hit con shift, it'll it will uh, uh, only select certain things. So let's go back to my OneDrive. Let's see what this happens. So I'm creating control. Okay, so control is one at a time and then whatever is highlighted will be uploaded to the folder. So there is, okay, so let's try this again, Genade. Let's just take this one step at a time and let's go do the screenshot and see if this will happen. So I'm holding in my control button and I'm selecting some items. Let's see if this happens. There we go. I have now uploaded and there you'll see it gives uh, what has just been uploaded and there again is that little icon, the little three little lines that says it has been uploaded the, just now. When you want to upload or, um, folds, folders, please make sure that it is not too big or, uh, and, and check your settings of what you have bought on OneDrive. Uh, there is a limit to Google Drive and OneDrive. All right, so when you want to now download, download is much the same as upload. Please take note that when you download large folders, usually uh, images or photos are, are very large and that is going to automatically in, go into a zip folder into your uh, file explorer on your computer or your device that you're downloading it to. And then you can go and extract it later on. And that's also a fairly simple process. Again, colleagues, uh, we, uh, we can have an even better expert and it'd be even better than, than my colleague on, on online now. The big thing is go click a button and see what happens. I say to my learners in my class, if you click on a button, uh, it's not necessarily the wrong button, we are discovering something new. And that's what I want, one of the things I want you to take away from today. Click a button, you discover something new. Right, now I want to go, it's on my, uh, the f f f documents on my OneDrive. I want to go and download it. There are multiple ways to download, to upload, to do various things on the computer. There are never only there's never only one option. You can go to your file explorer and go and download it there. See, there it is. But I don't want to do that. I want to work uh, straight from my my um, OneDrive, and now I can highlight that that document. And there again, options at the top. I have open in. So then it gives me an option. If it's a if it's a different document, it will give me a different. See now, it doesn't give me the open uh, um, d um, option. If it's an Excel spreadsheet, Excel will it will give you the option open with Excel uh, and so forth. But for this purpose, we want to just download. Go and hit the download button, and there we go. There is our download icon at the top. Uh, and there is my documents that I've recently downloaded. It will give you a list of the download. Now again, look at what your screen, if you don't know what the icon is, then you can simply hover over it and it'll give you an option. Now I wanna say oh, show in folder because mm, maybe I don't know what happened to the download and I don't know what one, where OneDrive uh, send it to by default. I click on that icon and let me just share this screen with you. There it is in my download folder. So you can see it's my this PC, uh, the, that folder, that folder, that folder. Don't pay attention to that. That's not important as long as you are in the download folder. Then you can click, uh, then it gives look at all your downloads that you've done, it will be there. So if you download stuff and you think, in order. I have no idea where this document is. And you think, okay, I I want it to be there, but it's not there. Always go look on your download folder. It 
goes in there first. It's, it gets saved and downloaded in there first. Then you can go and work uh, from here. But what I like to do is I like to cut. There's your, your options. Cut. Go to your do, to your uh, file folder that you want to do it on your on your uh, um, hard drive on your device. Right click and then you can paste it in there. Now it's going to complain with me because I already have that. Again, don't panic. Read what on what's on the screen and choose an option. I don't want to. Let's just replace it in this destination. It's okay. If the document is open in a word in the in the app that you're working in, it'll also complain. Hang on, I can't do anything with this document because it is in use or it is open. Do I have any other questions so far? No, you're all good, Liesl. All good. Thank you can continue. Thank you, JC. All right. So now the next one we are going to look at. Now we need to share. All right. So sharing can get a little bit complicated because what does all the, the options mean? Uh, I'm And you need to make sure that you share it with the Poppy Act in mind and the proper uh, recipients in mind. Uh, I know I created a folder. I click on it. There's nothing in my folder. I'm going to upload. So I've saved this activity for now. I want to go up for upload of files and my ring screen is going to pop up. I'm going to go where I've uh, click on where I've saved it on my PC, on my device. I'm going to click on my path where I created it. Here we go. Photos and I have pre-saved these photos for this exercise. Again, the shortcut in shift where you want to select uh, or control where you want to select uh, um, separate items. No, I want to only do under 12. So where's my there? Ooh, okay, so under 12, 12, 12, 12 and I click open and you will see there it says upload for items Ta -da! neat tidy each photo is labeled so that it doesn't also get lost in translation if i go back it'll uh, it, it's still neat and tidy i can go and now and create a folder and say under 12 cd and let's make it let's have some fun let's make it a green folder and now I can oh, no, go back. I can say select, select, and I can say move to. So those three little buttons always gives you more options. But now I want to say, so you can do one at a time, but again, shortcuts are better and Microsoft or Google or whatever app you're working on always gives you an option to be more effect, effective and efficient. You tick, click on the re three little uh, um, dots for more options. You say move to, and it's going to give you a nice big option. One moment, please. There we go. So in there, I've created under 12 CD, and I'm going to click on it, and I'm going to say at the bottom, it says move here. I'm going to say yes, please, and there it has now moved. All right, looks like I want to, I have to do one at a time. That's fine. Let's just repeat the process. Can I do it again so that everybody can just see? So you highlight the, the item, you click on the little, if you hover over the photo or the document, it'll give you a, uh, uh, option you select and you toggle, you hover or you click on the re three little dots for more options. You say move to, um, you select your file there. Come on, there we go. And you say, move here. There we go. This immediately looks much neater and tidier. Okay, thank you for that thank poll again. See what the options are. Again, read what's on the screen. When I get, to, oh, now that I'm at this point, colleagues, your best, your best friend is right click. Right click. On your mouse, okay, so I'm going to give you, if, if you now, uh, um, um, we, we're all familiar with right click. On your, if you're on a laptop, it's the, the right button on your pad. If you right click on your, on your mouse, anywhere on the screen, anywhere on your document, it'll give you options. 
Similar to the options at the top, it'll give you options down here. So that is my best friend. If I don't know, or if I want more options, or I'm not, I'm so frustrated because I want to do this with a certain document, but genade, I'm not seeing the option. Right click. There it will give you main, uh, similar options to the top, but sometimes in many cases, it will give you more options. Right. Now I want to share this document. I'm going to highlight it and I'm going to hit the share button at the top. Now, there is my share options. So it says which document you want to share. How do you want to share? Anyone with this link can edit. Oh, now this is where things get interesting. If it's an assessment uh, and you want to share it with, let's say, a pod and you want to share it with your great colleagues or the management team uh, or the the Alson department and you want them to edit be able to edit the document you leave it like that anyone with this link can edit however a document can get a very very complicated very uh, um, um, again crowded with everybody's comments and so on and if people don't really know uh, there's Personally, there's a certain way that I would I edit a document where the recipient or the creator can see what I have done. Right, let's just go back. Go back, go back. I hit share. Sorry, I clicked on a on an icon without showing everybody. Okay, again, there's your close option. I hover it. I don't know what it means. I hover over it. It gives me a quick description. There's a little pencil. What does it mean? I don't know. Hover over it. Ah, oh, okay. Can edit. Now, if you click on the drop down arrow, it gives you these three options. Can edit. So can make changes. That is open for anybody with the link to make a change. Or you can say can view and cannot make changes. So let's say, for example, it is a letter to parents and you don't really have time you are certain that changes have been made and it's the final version and you want people just to to throw an eye over it and see what the final document is going to look like before sending it out to the parents. You click on can only view or you can click on share settings. Okay, so we have now clicked there on shared settings. Is everybody with me? Can I do it again? Uh, the drop down arrow, click on it. Then you can go and choose your options. The tick next to it tells me what I have currently selected. If I click on it again, the tick is gone. All right? Do you see it? There, I, my my current setting is I anybody can edit, but if I choose it, then this changes to view only. See, the pencil is now gone. But if I want to go sh even more settings, more options, I go click on again. Universal icon for settings is a gear. And that is something that that I love about ICT. A lot of icons, a lot of things are universal. So like, for example, this little icon here means share the Internet open. Uh, um, uh, the gear is um, settings at the top right hand corner here. We have download and that always looks the same. OK, now we're going to go click set sharing settings and again. I can now say share with anyone, but doesn't and doesn't require sign in. OK, so sign in means to their OneDrive, meaning anybody on the Kenrich OneDrive. This is not my personal one, but anyone in in this Kenrich OneDrive who has access and login details can access the document. OK, but let's just go back, share. Drop down arrow settings. Okay, now I would say no, I want to share it with specific people. Share with specific people you choose using their name, group, family, or email. And I say that is what I want to do. Then you can say can edit. And then there's an expiry date. You can say, okay, hang on, guys. Uh, assessment time is on around the corner. It, all our um, assessments must be in by a certain date. But now you want to share it with your HOD or your colleagues for, for um, double checking. You can change 
the document. Keep your shared drives and photos more secure. Okay. I can't do that because I don't have the right premium. I don't want to go premium because then I have to pay. I don't want to do that. But you have that option. Let's say, for example, I'm in my OneDrive. Uh, no, I don't want to download. I want to share. Everybody, we're still with me while I'm waiting for that for upload. Okay. Everybody's still with me. No okay. questions yet. All right. So now you see sharing settings in my pre per personal drive looks a little bit different than sharing op op options in my uh, uh, work drive, my school drive. Colleagues, just read what's on your screen. It is similar. There again. General icon, universal icon, settings, and there you see the same options, but it's more because it's a, a work uh, drive. There you can see people in Kenridge, people with existing access, people you choose. So that helps with, with accessibility. And here I can now click on my expiry date, if you can see it, and I can say, uh -uh, you must be finished with this by the 21st of September. If you're not finished by the 21st of September, sorry, I need it back. But it will look similar on yours. Uh, and I'm not sure if you're following with me on your OneDrive. But because this is a corporation or an organization OneDrive, the settings will be the same. And uh, uh, OneDrive has now personalized it. And I'm sure Google Drive also by just adding, you know, the, the setup is so in such a way that it will say people in Edge Meet Primary or Beaumont Primary, that your name of your school will appear there. So it's got, it's got nothing to do with WCED. It's OneDrive settings, if that answers your question. All good? You will be... It's also about being part of an organization, like you just said, Liesl. So if the, the school is part of the Google Workspace, then they are using Google. Hmm. You are part, um, Kendridge is part of the Microsoft suites of Office 365. That's oh, yeah. why you are able to share in this in this way. Hmm. We, the WCED, has offered um, WCG schools accounts to all teachers so that they have access to Microsoft products. So should they then also set up tests, quizzes, worksheets, whatever, they can use it. <clears throat> They can use this uh, WCG Schools account to then work on a similar Microsoft product then that, that they would have already downloaded onto their computer. Let's quickly then finish up with sharing because I want to get to the next uh, topic of our discussion. Okay, so as, uh, now we've chosen what people can do with this document. And just for argument's sake, we're going to say anyone with this link. Then you can click if you've now changed all the settings. So again, Look on your screen. The little arrow that paints the, or the little line or arrow that drops, it's a drop down arrow. There's more options. If you're not sure, uh, um, um, hover over it and it'll give you an option. We don't want to set an expiry date. We don't want to set a password. We can just go and click on apply and say, good, we are happy. Now you have options here. You can send to very specific people. Hello, Melissa. There you are. Hello. Okay. So, hello, Melissa. You're going to get an email right now. So, there I have selected Melissa and I can add more people. If I want to, okay. So, if I want to send, I'm going to look at the error now. If I want to send to people, uh, more than one people in my organization. Now, already OneDrive has blocked me and said, uh, 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 Melissa is not part of your organization. So you cannot share directly from people outside of your organization. I can only share with people inside of my organization. So in other words, people with a Kenridge email address. So Jenny is now going to receive a very funny email and I will apologize tomorrow morning. And there you see the error has been removed. So for argument's sake, let's send it to myself. There we go. Where am I? I was there. There we go. I click on it and I can type a message, say, hi, please see attached. Please edit before the expiry date or please. This is what you wanted. 
Right. Again, hover over it. Message actions. This item hasn't been shared yet. Ah, okay. No, I don't want to click there. I am happy with what I see on my screen. Now I can go ahead and click on send. And all your recipients in your organization has received this email. But now I want to send it to Melissa. But Melissa can't receive my email or, or directly from OneDrive because she's not in my organization. Now, what do I do now? Very simple. You click on the copy link. Once I clicked on link, it will say, ah, da -da, did you see the pop up? It said link copied. Right now I can go to my Outlook and I can go and say, and just a normal email, open a new um, um, email, type in the email, body email, whatever, and then copy the link, paste the link. All right, so let's do that. It almost shows us a shortcut. So we're going to, Melissa, you're going to receive an email, okay? Uh, yes, I'm waiting patiently. <laughs> Melissa. Oh, oh, no, not a student. Melissa. Melissa. There we go. All right. And I say meme. And I say hi. There we go. So now, where is the link? Okay. Keep up with me. I know I'm toggling back and forth. Hang on. Hover cam is catching up. Right. A shortcut that we can use for paste. Copy and paste. We don't necessarily always want to right click on our screen on our mouse and then paste da, 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 da. We want to be efficient. We want to be effective. So you click uh, hold control and V that is paste control C is copy control V is paste. So you hold control V and paste. Okay. Let's go see how this works on my email. Control V. And there uh, it gives me options. There we go. And Google uh, OneDrive is so beautiful and awesome that it even gives a proper name to the file. It doesn't give that odd link with uh, 10,000 characters. And I can now say, have a lacquer day. And I hit send and Melissa has received the email. Yes, please. This... I've been waiting in suspense for this one. <laughs> I haven't forgotten. Okay. So now here I'm I'm going to call in the Calvary. Um, who's our Microsoft fellow? Giselle. Giselle. She's very quiet. You're very quiet. Know. Giselle Genade. Are you, are you already sipping a glass of wine over there? Come help me out here. So if you... Because I didn't... I want to show this practically. So I just want to go find. Uh, I think if you open a Google Doc, Google Doc, a Doc, a document, a Microsoft Word document, then you'll be able to search for the version history to see who was working on the document. Yes, <laughs> yes, I agree. I'm going to do that now, Melissa. But for quick access, if we can think of a little bit back, there were two. Uh, um, um, photos that was just lying here oddly and I went and created this file and there you'll see Liesl edited it yeah that is a weird name and there if I hover over it it'll give the details okay so there is the content that I, sh I, I you I did it looks like you prefer to work between oh no oh, no that's wrong so, uh, um, JC, to answer your question, if you want to quick access and to see who you, who uh, modified the document last, it will be, uh, it will show here on modified by. Do you see it? So, all right. Right, so you see my screen, um, not to, to interfere with too much of the Poppy Act and things that's going on internally. As uh, Giselle now said, on the right-hand side here, you'll see there's Krishna and Gareth and Joni and this, I edited last, and Chris, blah, 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 blah. You'll see there it goes down. As Melissa said, uh, you can even say, 
you see, Krishna shared this with me. Gareth edited this document. Joni edited this document. And as uh, um, Giselle said, I can type in here Jenny. And now Jenny is my, my immediate line manager. That's why she keeps on popping up. So now I can see here. Oh, okay. So group photos that happened this week. Please say my condolences because it was absolutely grueling. Like photo day always goes. Uh, group photos 2023. I can go and say, hang on, what is happening here? Oops. And I can see five, Jenny and five others had e edited this document. So uh, I don't really want to go into this because it's, again, just internal stuff. So as I said, here we have some shortcuts on the on our keyboard and shortcuts are a lovely way to just make your time in front of the computer much more efficient uh, and manage your time better we're going to look at some general ones but the first one i want to look at is this one that says split screen yeah at the bottom of your presentation when you go i'm going to now toggle between my hover cam here you can see my keyboard and when we go to our shortcut it says the window key window key that is the window key it actually looks like a window and arrow let me just move over right so we have the control key and this side is a control key as well so you have again as i said Wait, let my hover cam just catch up with itself. Again, on the computer gives us lots and lots and lots of options. There's never only one option. So it's control on this side of the keyboard and on the other side of the keyboard. So for my hover cams, um, uh, just for limitation of my hover cam, it's control and the arrow key. The right or left arrow key. So if I go to my my keyboard, my computer keyboard, and I'm going to hit the the window button and my arrow, then you see that this happens. I'm splitting my screen. So if you are not fortunate enough to have multiple screens and you only have one device, a desktop or a laptop, you use the window and arrow key. And now you see the 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 window the 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 program that was open last, I'm going to do it again. So this is my program that was open last. I want to now go to my presentation because I want to do both at one stage. I hit the window key, hold it, and I hit my arrow, either left or right. Now you see it jumped to the right. And now this is all the other windows and programs that's open. You can see I've got quite a lot of things going on. I do not advise that, never a good idea. But now I can go and select what else I want to present it on my screen or I want to work on. So this works well if you want to transfer data or you want you have got two assessments going on, you have your mark sheet going on, you have your mark book going on, your emails, uh, multiple things at one stage. So going back to our first trick is the tab brow tab browse browsing. If I want to open a new tab, I can click, go and click on control, use this control and T. So always the control. If, if the shortcut asks for control or alt, you can do, you have to hold it or even shift, hold it in and you go and hit the T button, the T, the T key on your keyboard. That will allow you to open a new tab on your browser. Windowed browsing, new window is control N. I'm just going to run through these because these are quite straightforward. You, more tricks display. So now I want to, I'm watching a YouTube video uh, and I'm presenting it to the kids and I want it into full screen. So I'm just going to exit this. I'm just going to open a browser and pretend that we are going to open a YouTube video There's YouTube and I am going to okay let's just open oh, I've got a lot of music 
any kind of video. All right, so let's just do this. I will silent it. But now I want to present it full screen. You can go and hit F11 on your, on your keyboard, F11, way up there, function 11. That is where we can do lots of, uh, lots of things. However, sorry, let me just, there. However, somewhere on your keyboard will be this almost secondary keyboard, uh, a key on your keyboard. When I go and hit this key with the function key that's at the top, you'll see I have other options here. My volume button, and that's the, the, the primary key. Volume up, volume down, mute, undo. Uh, um, there you see airplane mode. That's the primary key. The secondary key is now F1, F2. Now, Hanada, where do you find that? How do you access that? I hit the, this key, the secondary one, and I can go and select then what I want. Oh, I'm going to stretch my fingers. F11. I have to hold it in. So just go and check your laptop, which option you have. All right, now I'm going to go back to my YouTube and I'm going to hit F11. There it goes to full screen. So now you see that all my control panel has disappeared. Okay, and there again, don't panic. You have two options. You have escape, Ooh, escape, best friend, escape, or you have the if you hover over your top of your screen, you have your, your okay, this is not presentation mode, but if you hover over your screen, that little cross, the closing uh, icon disappears. Uh, appears. All right, let me just get there. And I click on it, and there I exit full screen mode. So, right, so here on your screen, you will then see switch tabs. Ooh, I love this one because. I don't always have time to go to my hover cam, to go to this, to go to my, huh, huh, this is too much. This is just too much. This for me is, I think my favorite shortcut. Now it is control. Let me go to the hover cam. Control, alt, and tab. Oh, this keyboard only has tab at the one. Everybody knows where the tab key is. Let me just see if I can just zoom out a little bit to get no can't. Okay, the tab key is on the left hand side of your screen. So the shortcut is you have control, alt, and then you can go and hit the tab key. All right, let's just split the screen again. And then I want to split it with where's my presentation? Okay, let's see what's next. Next is, all right, so there's just, I'm gonna stop screen. There is the uh, full screen and the control. Uh, okay, now let's go open a browser. Now I want to share this link at the top. I wanna share this link at the top with colleagues or friends I want to uh, pop it into a whatsapp uh, because it's a cool song or a cool link I can go and control L there you see the 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 link has highlighted I want to share this link control C for copy and then I can go to a word document or whatever the case may be and I can go and say I want to copy control V is paste and there is the link. If you press enter, then the link is there and I can go and control click on it and it opens the link again. Did everybody follow? Let me do that again. I do suggest to go and pin your OneDrive. So I can, I'm actually going to do it right now. So this is my school OneDrive and I am going to go home. There it is. And I'm going to say right click and I'm going to pin it. There, I have pin it. Now I have quick access 
to there's my Google Drive, there's my classroom, there is my OneDrive, but I have not taken away, I have not done anything with my other browsing tab, tabs at the top. But how do I bookmark this? I can go and click on the three little dots here. Remember those are more options. And I go to bookmark and don't, it, those are my current bookmarks that I have t um, t t um, saved. And I click on bookmark this tab. Be careful, bookmark all tabs. That's, I've done that before. It took me a while to unbookmark all those. Go bookmark this and you gave it a, give it a quick name and you hit done. I'm not going to do it now because I already have pinned it. If you now see work in order, I don't want to pin bookmark again. Back is your there's always an option to undo or option to do multiple things at once. To file. Okay. And there you should get to info. Click. There and there it says version history. Version history. Da -da, that easy. That easy. That and then easy. you can okay. see who was yes. working on the document. So here you can see Leslie <laughs> Anderson worked on it in January at 7 a.m. And then Jane, uh, Jenny Goslett worked on it in January 19th at 1.45 p.m. Right, for sake of the path, where, how to get there. So you opened a, a shared document offline. You've already downloaded it, but there were so many people working on it. Click on File, click on Info, and then Version History. There you can see manage document there's a little drop down arrow ah and there we have more options recover unsafe documents check for issues colleagues again click on a button and see what happens jc if you're not really really a stickler for don't mess with my document you can even go and add a password for for your document so that that one colleague cannot touch anything on your document um Colleagues, thank you so much for your time, and I'm glad to see that we've we gained some some um, um, colleagues during the session, instead of losing it due to load shedding. But. Uh...